Hey everybody, Dave Monahan here at Goods and Tools and Supplies. And once again, it's time for another Tech Lab Tuesday. And today, I'm going to continue in my conversation with our 3D uh, fast cut uh, uh, setting system here. A uh, multi-angle uh, C-cutting system that does all three angles or four or five angles on some of these cutter blades simultaneously, simultaneously, simultaneously with a single carbide blade. Today I wanted to show you the uh, the benefits of our of our counterboring tool. This is an adjustable counterboring tool. We use a triangle blade on that. Now you guys have, have uh, taken me to school uh, over the years. You've been using FT90 blades or the FT90 20 BHP blade to try to cut out that old valve seat. And you've had some pretty good successes in that. From that uh, information. Uh, our tool designer came up with this triangle tool as you can see and we've got a lot more support back here so we can we can um, uh, uh, more efficiently more effectively more accurately uh, set that uh, dimension of counterboard and to achieve that accuracy in setting the counterboard dimension I'm going to bring back our MGA MIC micrometer I, I showed you all the features and benefits of this tool but I never really showed you actually how it works as you know, I've got a, a special uh, hardened bushing inside of here, and uh, it's for 375, so you need a tapered bottom 375 uh, pilot, and that acts as our, as our tool post to hold our, our uh, tool from there. We've got a calibrating standard that's already been through, so I've already calibrated this. I know it, it is set in accurate in that regard. And what I wanted to do is kind of give you the, uh, the the way I approach the setup, and you can read this in the instructions uh, as well. What happens is right underneath here, we've got uh, tension uh, screws, and I like to put just a little bit of tension on the bottom of that. I want to make sure that I've made contact here on this horizontal adjustment, because what I want to do is I want to bring this carbide blade to touch the carbide anvil here. I don't want to use the micrometer like a C-clamp, and clamp this way to bring it down to speed. I want to expand the tool up to the correct dimension. And by putting a little bit of tension here and making sure I'm already making contact with the inside of the ball head right in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. But that really makes it uh, a lot easier to come up to speed. I've already got my micrometer set at 1490. That's the dimension uh, I'm going to cut on my first pass from that. And I, like I said, I've got tension here. It may look like a little bit of a gyration to hang on the tool, but if you hold on to it like this, try to put that blade right in the center of this carbide anvil on this micrometer, we can then efficiently start bringing that tool out. Once that tool is making contact with that anvil, then we have hit that 1490 size. So there I am right there. Double check my dimension here again and back them off just a little bit. And now I've got that size set. So I can pull that off. This now is where I want to go back under here and give them babies a nice snug. You don't have to torque them or, you know, get a four foot helper bar on them and make sure they're good and tight. That's going to hold that whole assembly in place when we get over here to the seat and guide machine and counterboard. So I'm all locked down there. My dimensions are correct. I'm going to reconfirm it again because, you know, you're not measuring, you're just guessing. Uh, this tool can uh, do a very accurate uh, counterboard. Uh, we do it in, in uh, uh, progression. We cut a little bit of the ID, a little bit more of the ID, a little bit more of the ID, and then finally we get all the ID out. That takes the interference fit or the crush away from the valve seat material, and we can just pull that whole remaining seat right out of the counterboard. So let me show you how we're doing that on this uh, seat and guide machine, this Winona PH2000 that I have right over here. Come on. Okay, well here we are now at the, uh, get that out of my way, <laughs> out of our Winona Van Norman uh, PH2000. Uh, it's a 30 plus uh, year old machine, but it's still rock solid. Uh, there's a lot of these machines out there uh, this was kind of the silhouette a lot of uh, seat and guide machines were uh, improved from uh, on this particular model. Uh, Sun is still out there, uh, KIs are still out there, Peterson machines are out there, the Quickway machines are out there. 
uh, the new generation machines of, of Surdy, Nguyen, and uh, Rottler, uh, Comac, uh, Winona Van Norman, uh, have all introduced uh, new uh, generation machines. Uh, but there's still quite a few of these out there, and uh, for an entry level uh, seat and guide machine, it's not a bad investment uh, uh, at all. But it's like anything, uh, be sure you confirm what you're buying before you buy it, and make sure you have good quill integrity. That's the main thing on this. But again, here I go off on a tangent because uh, that's what Dave Monahan does. But, we're over here at the seat guide machine. I'm on a first level. I got my Goodson level. I'm, I've leveled my workpiece uh, left to right. I've also checked it uh, front to back. Uh, my machine is already level, so I, I'm good to go on the on the Goodson level uh, to make sure everything is dialed in. I like a bounce spring. On this particular thing, the way the bounce spring needs to get back up underneath here, I've had to eliminate the upper bushing. You don't have to run a bounce spring, but I kind of grew up with bounce springs and, and seat grinding, and uh, uh, and it's still recommended. You can see right here, I'm gonna pop that off to the side, and that way I can have the bounce spring actually do its job. It puts pressure going up as the quill and everything else is putting pressure going down. Just kind of helps stabilize that tool a little bit. So I've already locked down, I'm leveled, I'm, I'm cued in, I got my work light. Uh, where it needs to be. I can go ahead and, and air float my table. Right now my quill's uh, uh, loose and that's okay because I'm trying to get into position here. So we can go ahead and bring that down. Now you might say, well, wait, Dave, you've got a, a kind of a U-joint set up here between this ball head and this ball head driver. And, and that's a true statement. It is kind of a U-joint setup. But again, we don't want this machine to influence what this cutter's doing especially when we're using high-speed steel pilots. You'll remember I said that the high-speed steel pilot can actually bend from the cutting pressure. Uh, carbide won't bend, uh, it'll break. But uh, So we still, uh, back to original space, we still have a, a responsibility to be as perfectly lined up as possible so that we don't have that influence coming from the machine itself and the parts can actually float. I even like to get it down there close, allow that thing to float around. You can see this table's moving ever so slightly. Then I know I've got good integrity in my alignment. I go ahead and lock my quill in, and now I'm ready to go. General speeds, uh, we're gonna turn in a clockwise uh, rotation. I'll go up here and kick it into that RPM. And uh, if you want, you can go ahead and set your, your depth stop here. And in this particular case, we'll probably set that at about a quarter inch. I can grab my calipers, and that way I've got uh, just right at a quarter inch where I want to be. And then I can go ahead and lock him down. That prevents me from overcutting uh, this counterboard. Because again, I'm just going straight down. As I mentioned, uh, we're just going to take a, a minor ID cut on the inside of this valve seat. I'm going to uh, uh, eliminate that crush, the uh, uh, retaining pressure that's holding that valve seat in place. So let's see what we've got going on here right now. I have to reset my depth stop after they come down and make contact, pick her up a quarter inch. Some of these have a little scale right there that you can, you can eyeball uh, as well. And uh, then we can set it that way. So now I can't over travel past that amount. Go to my first speed, go to my second speed. I don't need any cutting pressure at this time. Got my safety glasses on, got my apron going on here too. But I do need a consistent down feed all the way through. You can see it's starting to come into play. Don't want to push this tool too hard. Again, we're just trying to get the ID out of that valve seat material we can take the whole valve seat cutting ring out. You can see if I try to take too big a bite, it'll, it'll growl at me, it'll screech. That's called chatter. If you start hearing that, you want to back off on your feet because you're you're over pushing the tool. I didn't say this was a speed tool. This is a finessing tool. It works very, very good as you can see. Let that thing find somewhere all the way down.
Again, I got impatient. I tried to push the tool and it started squawking at me. contact here so I've completed my vertical travel. Back that off a little bit. Go ahead and turn that off. Get my head out of the way and you can pull your tool off. You can see this single carbide blade actually did a pretty good job of cutting out that valve seat ring. So I'm going to open this up again, probably another 25 thousandths and uh, then I'll come in and, and, and do another cut for you. So just hang on. So I'm going to go ahead and set this at a at a thirty thousandths increment, just like that there. Make sure I got my handle set correctly. Bring that cutter right on out to that handle, and then lock it down. I got good integrity right there. I'm good to go at this point. Lock my horizontal screws in again. Make sure I'm good and set. Get my bounce spring here. Bring my head over. Line everything up. Should be in about the same space that you left it. However, you did move the head, so you've got to move that back around. Lock it into position. Make sure you still got a nice movement there. <clears throat> Always like to float that a little bit more one more time. And uh, let's go ahead and make contact here. And then I'll set another quarter inch of increment of, uh, of spacing there, 250,000. Right there is where that is. Lock that down, double check my measurement. Remember, if you're not measuring, you're just guessing. So get that locked down, undo the quill here so I've got movement. Turn it on, right hand rotation, clockwise, up on the second speed, pilot's in, we're cutting the movement. I go pushing it, start chattering on me. Again, this could be a very nice addition to your seat and guide machine. And you could probably cut six, eight, nine, ten seats with this with no problem at all. And then you push it because you're getting in a hurry, you get a little impatient. And that thing can actually crack, and when I'll show you where that crack will occur. And then the next seat might be okay, but then seats after that, you're going to start wobbling around, and you won't have a consistency to that counterboard I mentioned. Uh, slow and steady is, is the pace here. Slow and steady, kid. Get everything backed off. Do your lock. Slide your quill out of the way. Pull your ball head off. Remove your spring. And I normally brag up that I like you guys to vacuum versus to blow but in this particular case I don't have my vacuum cleaner handy so stand back the reason I don't like to blow chips around the shop <clears throat> is because chips can end up everywhere you don't want them to be but come on in here a little bit closer I'll try not to jiggle you around too much but I want you to really get a good look at that counter bore I've got going you can see it's a nice straight wall on it. I've got a nice 90 degree floor to it as well. And uh, I need to just continue uh, on that process until I get that uh, valve seat uh, cleaned up all the way. And then I'll be good to go. Now I don't recommend this, this uh, type of a cutter setup for production. If you've got a lot of seats to do, let's go ahead and uh, uh, invest Excuse me, and let's go ahead and invest in a, an actual counterboard tool. If we've got a whole bunch of these heads that all need new valve seats, this tool is designed to get you through one, two, three, half a dozen seats, you know, on a specialty application coming in. These are designed to work all day long for that uh, counterboard. And of course, you all still have your brace counterboard tools that happen to be uh, coincidentally to line up on that nominal size. Go ahead and use that as well.
What this did was, as I mentioned, we, we expand the versatility of the 3D fast cut system all the way through. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You can catch us on the web at goodson.com or you can call us toll free 1-800-533-8010. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.